First of all, thanks to the Board of Trustees, the faculty, uh, the administration, and all the alumni of Merida College uh, for this honor, because it's truly an honor to be able to address the class of 2021. Now, class of 2021, this is a huge achievement. Um, uh, you know, what I hope you do today is take time to celebrate it. And all I want to do today is talk about you and your future. So I'm going to take roughly about five minutes as I think I've got some suggestions that you can tack on to Leah's suggestions along with Jackie's suggestions that are going to help you both personally and professionally. All right. So let's get started with those suggestions. Let's talk a little bit about your career. In terms of your career, your early career will be divided up into two five-year blocks. The first five years, all your employer is looking to do and see from you is hard work. They will train you. They will give you the skills you need to be successful in that organization. And all they want to see from you is hard work. Now, what do I mean by that? Show up on time. Make yourself available after hours. Make yourself available on the weekends. What, is, what do you guys think of when I, I say that? It sounds like a Marietta College career, fair enough. I mean, Marietta College has prepared you so well for your first five years of whatever you do because of one thing, and that's your work ethic. Each one of you is leaving Marietta College which, with a great work ethic. And my only advice to you, don't lose it. Keep going. That's going to make you incredibly successful in your first five years. Now, years six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, the key to those years is becoming a subject matter expert. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is be known for something. Look at your faculty over here, your professors. They are experts in their field, experts in English, experts in accounting and engineering. And what that means is they publish and people go to them for advice. In those years, you have to be known for something. Make sure that people come to you for advice. Now, beyond 10 years, there is one thing and one thing only that will determine how high you go, how many people you lead and so forth. And that one thing is judgment. Now, judgment, that's a function of making good decisions and also building trust in others, along with making sure that people trust you. So what I want to talk a little bit about is how do you build trust? Where, what are three easy ways to build trust with you and somebody else? The first one is just do what you said you were going to do. Meaning if you told me you were going to call me today at 5, call me today at 5. Could be as simple as that. Not 501, not 505, at 5. Or it could be as complex as delivering a big project at the end of the month. But the key thing is do what you said you were going to do. Now, in my speech, I'm going to have three participatory parts. This is the first one. So to basically illustrate my point, I'm going to tell you all a riddle. And at the end, it's a multiple choice question. Don't get all fired up, right? But I'm going to ask for a show of hands in terms of what you all think the right answer is to the riddle. Fair enough? You with me? Come on. You guys are going to be all right. All right. So. The riddle is there's three frogs on a log. One of them decides to jump. So how many frogs are there on the log now? Answer number one is zero, meaning the first frog jumped, startled the other two frogs, they jumped too. So the first answer is zero. The second answer is it's basic math, right? The first frog jumped, three minus one has always been two. It's always two also at Marietta. So there's two frogs on the log. Or the third answer is there's still three frogs on the log. Why? Because the frog decided to jump. It didn't actually jump. So show of hands, how many think that the right number is zero? Dude, are you serious? <laughs> OK. How many think that it's two? OK, now how many think it's three? See how smart you guys are? That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. So what's the moral of the riddle? The moral of the riddle is don't decide just to do stuff. Do it. Make sure you do what you say you're going to do. That builds trust. 
Now, second way to build trust is be direct, but don't be disrespectful. What do I mean by that? I'm a big proponent that you all will go into the world. You need to use your voices. You definitely need to use your voices. But there's a time and a place for everything. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, look, guaranteed, the people that you all are going to go work with or go, go deal with with your next degree and so forth, trust me, they're not waiting for you all to show up and give them all this Marietta College wisdom. Now, if they ask you a question, though, answer it how you think it should be answered based on what you think. I've seen too many young folks, right, answer questions around what they think I want to hear. When I ask a question, I definitely want to hear what you have to say, all right? But be, be very respectful around when you use your voice. Also, second thing, always invoke the 24-hour rule. Now, what's the 24-hour rule? Look, as you enter the next world, right, your life, things are going to be really good and things are going to go bad. And what I'm coaching you in terms of the 24-hour rule is do not, if something goes wrong, take the email, take the Twitter, take the Instagram, whatever it is, and start giving your point of view. Okay? Wait for 24 hours. It always, things always look different in the morning. Trust me. All right? You will feel a lot better that you didn't do it in the moment. And look, if you wake up the next day and you still think something's a good idea or you think you're still upset about something, that's when you action it. Because you're going to be a lot more rational and a lot more calm about how you deal with the situation. Again, that builds trust. And then the last thing is this, right? It's the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Now, all of you will be leaders at some point in time. As you go in to your next phase of life, or as Leah says, paint the next canvas, what you want to be able to do is look at the leaders. Look at the people that you're working with. How do they treat people? And what I have always found is that if you treat others the way you want to be treated, everybody will want to work with you, and you'll be a good leader. Okay? So as you think about that canvas, as you think about also what Jackie said in terms of trust, Remember, first five years, work hard. Second five years, subject matter expertise. And all along the way, continue to develop that sense of judgment and trust. Fair enough? Okay, the second participatory part of the speech is that I asked you guys, I hope that you spend time today celebrating your success. And I can't imagine coming to a celebration without a gift. So what's going to happen is as you all walk across the stage and get your diploma, like President Rood said, you're going to go back there and take a picture, but then you're going to go to this table over here. And what I've brought for you all is I've brought for you guys this nice beach bag, okay? I know you guys are sitting there going, what in the world am I going to do with a beach bag? But inside the beach bag is a brand new computer. So each one of you, listen, each one of you is going to get the brand new computer. Come on, I'm a technology guy. What did you guys think I was going to get? All right. Now, look, I got to believe those computers you've been using are beat up, right? They're, they're probably a little you know, aged and so forth, because we all know that technology is, is basically done after two or three years. So I'm hoping that my gift to you, because I'm proud of what you all have done, is, you know, is, is something that you guys can use as you start your career, okay? Now, third participatory point. You'll realize there's always strings attached to every gift. Come on, this isn't gonna be that hard, all right? Nothing's free in life. So as you watch your classmates walk across this stage, the one thing and the one thing I want you to do is I want you to make a mental list of everybody that has helped you achieve what you've achieved today. Because it's a great accomplishment. There is no question that this is going to be one of the single biggest accomplishments of your life. All right? And the key thing 
is never miss the opportunity to say thank you. So before the end of the day, whether it's a faculty member, whether it's an administration, whether it's a classmate, or whether or not it's your parents, say thanks, okay? Now, in the bag, what you will find is you'll also find a card. On the front of the card, you'll see a little note from me, and on the back, you'll see all my suggestions. What I hope you do is store this card somewhere. Come back to it every once in a while, because I honestly believe those suggestions will help you personally and professionally, okay? So look, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. If I can ever do anything for you, call. Congratulations again, and thank you so much for letting me talk. So you thought we were just giving you masks. Yeah, okay. And then you thought we were just giving you beach bags, all right? Thank you so much, Michael. And now we have a little surprise for Mr. Salvino. Could I invite um, Janet and Matt to come up? And Mr. Salvino, can I invite you to come and stand to my left? Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm honored to present to you our honorary degree recipient. And this is the part, let me, uh, let me remind you, uh, uh, this is your part, Matthew. Uh, Mike's wife, Denise, son, Matthew, and daughter, Morgan, are with us. Uh, Matthew's on his way to medical school at Duke University. And uh, I told Michael that I'm going to tell Matthew that, guess what, Matthew? Dad's going to be a doctor before you are, okay? One for dad, plus one for dad. He's shaking his head. Mike graduated from Marietta College, as you know, in 1987 with an industrial engineering major. He's currently the president and CEO of DXC Technology, publicly traded Fortune 500 company in the IT services industry. Prior to joining DXC, he held other leadership positions in IT, financial services, and human resources, including Care Capital Partners, Group Chief Executive at Accenture and President of the Americas at Exalt. Throughout the years, Mike Salvino has exhibited strong support for the college through his generosity of time, talent, and treasure. He and his family's foundation have made numerous substantial gifts in support of a variety of areas of the college, including student academic awards, student internships, the student food pantry, information technology support, athletics, as well as gifts specifically designated to directly support faculty salaries. In addition to the financial support Marietta College has received, Mr. Salvino and his family foundation have exhibited a strong sense of philanthropy to a variety of other charitable organizations, primarily in support of K-12 education, cancer research, and athletic development. He has served as a McDonough Center visiting executive. He was a member of the College of Science and Engineering Advisory Council, and for the past 10 years, he has served on Marietta College's Board of Trustees. He has distinguished himself as a trustee, particularly through his instinct related to investments, financial management, and information technology. His strong support for education is also exhibited through his service on the Board of Visitors to the Duke University Pratt School of Engineering. He has received numerous awards from a variety of professional organizations in recognition of his leadership and financial acumen. Awarding Mr. Salvino an honorary degree from his alma mater will hopefully be a most fitting capstone to his many honors and awards. Mike, beyond your business success, you have achieved great success in your service and philanthropy. Your commitment to service has been exhibited in a variety of ways. You have been a great friend of the college for many years. You have both given generously to the college of your time, your talent, and your treasure. Therefore, in honor of your lifelong and dedicated service to others and to Marietta College, and based upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the approval of the Board of Trustees of Marietta College, Marietta College is pleased to confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa upon Michael J. Salvino. Congratulations. <laughs> 